In order to work in 3D, you're going to need to understand how to navigate around. The view controls in 3D are a little bit different than they are in 2D. Most of you have mastered how to work in a 2D file, zooming in, zooming out, panning, things like that. But when you're in a 3D file, now you're going to have to understand a little bit more. So I'm going to show you several ways, ultimately ending up with the most efficient way to actually navigate around. A lot of people are familiar with icons and they're comfortable with icons. So I'm going to show you how we can rotate the view using icons. Up on my view controls across the top, there's an icon that's rotate view. I'm going to hold the left button down and I'm going to drag it down and I'm going to go to toolbox. On the toolbox for view rotation, you can see there's a lot of icons here. These are standard view rotations. For example, the second icon is top. If I click on that, you can see it rotates my view to the top view. The next one is front. If I rotate it around like that, there's my front view. And you can figure out the rest of them as they go through. The very first icon though is rotate view. And this is more of a dynamic method. So if I click on this on my tool settings window, you're going to see the method is set to dynamic. If I click here, you can see again, the top, front, right, isometric, but you also have a three point method. Dynamic allows me to control the view rotation by just moving my mouse. So I'm going to click on dynamic. I'm going to left click in the view. And then you can see as I move my cursor around, I'm able to rotate the view to an orientation that works best for me for whatever it is that I'm doing. Now, if I hit reset the right button, it takes me back to whatever the tool was that I was in, which is normal functionality in MicroStation. This is the icon method. Again, I wanted to show this because some people are comfortable with icons. This can be docked if you want. I'm going to close this because I want to show you a more efficient way that you should work with view rotation. Rotating the view around and navigating in the model should be something as comfortable as breathing. This means you should leave your left hand on or near the keyboard and your right hand remains on the mouse. If I, on the keyboard, hold the shift key down and then on my mouse hold the left and right button down, while holding them down, I'm in the rotate view and I can easily and very quickly rotate at any point. If I let them go, the view rotation stops. That's one way to do it. Now, to control where you're rotating about, what we have is a simple model, just a couple of objects in here. But if I wanted to control where I'm rotating about, before I did the shift and then left and right mouse buttons, I would do a tentative. So if I do a tentative right here, then I hold down the shift and then left and right mouse buttons on my mouse, you can see I'm rotating about that point. So this is a very common practice. You do a tentative, and then you rotate the view. And that gives you control of the point that you're rotating your view about. So that's probably the most straightforward way for rotating your view around. Going to an icon is a waste of energy. You should be able to leave your left hand on the keyboard, right hand on the mouse. Using that combination, you can rotate the view around very quickly. Now there are standard view rotations that you may want to go to, for example, top. That toolbox that I had opened has top on it, but there's again another quick way to get there. On my keyboard, I hold the shift key down and I right click on my mouse. This will bring up a pop-up menu for my view controls. It has all the standard stuff, window area, zoom out, there's fit view. But on the right side, because I'm in a 3D file, what I'm going to see are unique options relative to 3D. So here is my rotate view, just like the toolbox. There's my top view. So I can click on that. That will quickly rotate me to the top view. Now to go back, shift, right click. Here we have view previous and we have view next. So if I click view previous, this shows me what the view looked like prior to me rotating it. Holding down the shift key and right clicking again, in addition to the view controls here, you have three shortcuts to display styles. You've got illustration, we have shaded, and we have wireframe. So if I choose wireframe, that changes my display style to wireframe. If I do shift right click again, I can change this back to illustration. Allows me to quickly get there. Now if you want to pan, if you're working with the mouse buttons configured from headquarters, then holding the left and right button down allows me to pan my view. And obviously, zooming in and out is scrolling the wheel. So I can zoom in and I can zoom out. 
And if you do a tentative, let's say I do a tentative over here, then I zoom in and out, what you're going to see is that point remains fixed on the screen, which could be helpful in 2D and 3D. So I'm going to hit reset. Now there's another way to rotate the view using AccuDraw. So if I get the AccuDraw compass to appear, I'm going to do a control tentative right down here. You're going to see the AccuDraw compass appear. AccuDraw will be discussed in a future video. But right now, my AccuDraw compass appears on the screen. I want to rotate the AccuDraw compass to align with the face of this drainage inlet. So I can do RE, and then I move my cursor over the surface, in this case, the front of the DI. I data. My compass is now rotated to be planar to the front of the DI. With that done, I can now rotate the view to align with the AccuDraw compass. That's another two-letter shortcut, RV. If I type that in, RV, that rotates my view to align with my AccuDraw compass. So as you're using AccuDraw, if you've got your compass rotated in a specific orientation and you want the view to match that, that's where RV would come in. So I'm going to go ahead and rotate back to top orientation. Right now, I only have view number one open. It's not that uncommon that having a 3D file, you would want more than one view open. Right now, I'm in top orientation. I'm going to go to my view dialog down here at the bottom. This is where I can open additional views. So if I open up view number two, you're going to see it appear on the screen. It also currently is in top orientation. I'm going to now tile my view so I have the two views side by side. So I'm going to go to view as a tab up in the top and then I'm going to go to Tile. And this tiles the two views. I can now rotate each view independent of the other. So in view one, I'm in the top view. View number two, it's also currently set to the top view, but I could make this the active view, which it currently is, by clicking the title bar at the top. I can then shift, right click, and I choose front. So that rotates the view so that I'm looking at my model or design from the front view and I'm also looking at it from a top view. You can see this side by side. Now we obviously have more than two views available to us. We have up to eight different views, and each one of these views can be turned on, opened up, and we can rotate our model or design so that we can see eight different perspectives of our model. So it can be very handy. Before you close the file, in order for MicroStation to remember these views being open and the view rotations, you would want to do a save settings. That's either shortcut control F, or you can come up to the quick access toolbar at the top. There's a save settings up there. So hopefully this will get you started into the 3D world. It's the very basics. It will require practice. Again, my recommendation is leave your left hand on the keyboard so that you can easily access that shift key and then also your right hand on the mouse so that you're able to use the mouse buttons in conjunction with the shift key. And I think for me personally, one of the more productive things is shift right click, this bringing up the pop-up menu. I use this all the time to change my orientation and also my display styles. So hopefully this has given you a little bit of an introduction. It's gonna be practice, practice, practice. We'll see you in the next video.